Okay, here's another example of using the uh, addition theorem for angular velocities. So this is the same problem uh, or setup that I used for explaining how to do DCMs. Uh, there's a little bit of difference with them in this green uh, coordinate system that I set up. I, I moved it around a little bit, so it's not exactly the same, but similar. Uh, for those of you who didn't watch the video, the setup is we have the corner of this wall, this brown wall, that's a corner of a wall, and then we have this black door that swings out from the wall, and it forms an angle of theta with the back wall. And then on our door, we have this pink clock, and the minute hand forms an angle of phi from the vertical. We have frame G. Uh, frame G it is uh, our inertial frame. It's fixed to ground, is non-accelerating, so it's our inertial frame. And we have this red basis uh, fixed in G, where EX uh, points along this wall, uh, EY points along that back wall, and then EZ points straight up. Our next frame is frame D, D for door. And this is a non-inertial frame because it's, it's rotating, it's accelerating. And we have this green basis fixed to the door. And EX points along the door, it points along the base of the door. So if the door were to swing out a little further here, EX would now be pointing in this direction. Uh, we have EZ, which points straight down. And then EY is the direction EZ crossed with EX. So if you do EZ cross with EX, your thumb would point in that direction. Right hand rule. Finally, we have this frame M, this yellow frame, frame M, which has this basis UX, UY, UZ fixed in frame M. And M stands for minute hand. And so as this minute hand ticks around the clock, uh, UX, so say your minute hand's here now, UX would now point here. Um, UZ is perpendicular to the plane of the door. So it's going straight back. And then uh, UY is in the plane of the door and it's equal to uh, UZ crossed with UX, right? So UZ crossed with UX, your thumb would point in this direction. Okay, so that's, that's the setup. So let's go ahead and find the angular velocity of frame D of our door in frame G, which is our inertial frame. So how is, how is it rotating with respect to G? How is frame D rotating with respect to frame G? Well, we know that the door forms an angle of theta with the back wall. So that must mean that the door rotates at a rate of theta dot, and it's rotating this way. So a theta dot in that direction. This kind of rotation would be a negative red EZ. However, since capital red EZ and our green EZ, since those are anti-parallel to each other, this same rotation is a positive green EZ rotation, right, from the right-hand rule that we discussed earlier. So you can see we have written here theta dot green EZ minus theta dot capital red EZ. Great. Let's go on. So the angular velocity, let's find the angular velocity of frame M in frame D. So our minute hand in our door frame. Well, how does frame M rotate with respect to the green frame? It's rotating, uh, it, it's rotating at a rate of phi dot, right? The angle off of the vertical is phi. So this minute hand is going around the clock at a rate of phi dot with respect to the door, with respect to the door. And this rotation, it is doing a rotation like this about the positive UZ. And that same rotation like this is a negative EY rotation because UZ and EY are anti-parallel to each other. They point in opposite directions which is what I have written right here, phi dot uz or negative phi dot ey. So putting these together, we have the angular velocity of frame m in frame g. So remember that backstepping we did last video? We can go from m to d. So how is 
frame M rotating with respect to frame D, and then add that to how frame D is rotating with respect to our inertial frame. And that will give us the overall, how is frame M rotating with respect to ground? So we just add them up. So we take, uh, we're gonna take this one here. This is D and G, D and G. And then we're gonna add that to M in D, M in D. And there you go. This is our absolute angular velocity of frame M, of our minute hand, in our inertial frame ground. So let's go ahead and find the rate of change of some of these unit basi basis vectors uh, with respect to ground. Recall what we derived in that previous video, this property, where the rate of change of a unit basis vector in a rotating frame is equal to the absolute angular velocity crossed with the vector itself. So using this result, let's do an example. So let's find the rate of change of the green EX direction with respect to time. Well, the absolute angular velocity is D and G, is D and G, which we said was right here, theta dot EZ, theta dot EZ, and then we cross it with itself. We cross it with itself, we cross it with EX. So we end up with this expression, ez crossed with ex is ey, so we just end up with theta dot ey. So the rate of change, the rate of change of our unit basis vector ex is theta dot ey. Let's do another example. Say we have, uh, we want to find the rate of change of uy in our, in our m basis, our yellow basis. Well, we need the absolute angular velocity, which is m in g, m in g, which we just found up above was this guy right here. That's the absolute angular velocity of m and g. And we cross this with the vector itself, with ui. Cross it with ui. Okay, well, we can do this cross product fine. We can do uz cross with ui, but we cannot do ez cross with ui. Uh-oh, well, that's okay, because we know how to convert between different bases. We did that in our DCM video. So what are the rotations we need to perform to get from where we were, which is the green basis, to where we want to go, which is our yellow basis? Well, let's uh, let me zoom in here and let's go back up and talk through it. So what I'm going to first do is do a rotation, a positive 2 rotation, by 90 degrees. And this will swing up our EX basis so that it points straight up. So it points straight up and it's aligned with the vertical. And then I'm going to do a negative two rotation. So in this direction by an angle of phi, and that's going to swing down uh, that vertically aligned EX so that it's aligned with the minute hand. And now once it's aligned with the minute hand, you know, EZ is still pointing in the wrong direction. EZ is pointing in this, this way, but I need EZ to be perpendicular to the plane of, of the door. So I need to do a, what is this, positive one rotation, a positive one rotation by 90 degrees. So kind of try and visualize it in your head. We're rotating, we're doing a two rotation to bring this up, and we're rotating by 90 degrees, and then we're bringing it down uh, by phi, angle phi, by negative two rotation, and then we're doing a, trying to get this these right, a positive EX rotation by 90 degrees to make EZ point perpendicular to the plane. Okay, so that's exactly what we do down here. And go see my previous video about DCMs. I have everything drawn out very clear, and you can kind of see a little better what the rotations are. But these are the rotations we're doing to go from green to yellow. So this is exactly what we did. We did a two rotation by positive 90. And then we did a two rotation again, but by an angle of negative phi. And then we did a one rotation by positive 90 degrees. And you're just going to have to trust me that when you multiply this all out, you're going to end up with uh, this right here. And remember, you can swap these, yellow and green, if you take the transpose of this matrix on the inside. Taking a transpose means that you, you keep the diagonals the same 
and then you swap these guys, you swap these guys, and you swap these guys. Or you could think of it as you're turning rows into columns. So that's exactly what I have here. So this is our relationship to write our green EZ in terms of yellow. So our green EZ is going to be equal to negative cosine phi UX plus sine phi UY. And that's exactly what I've written right here. So now I can plug in, this is what we had written before up above, I just copied it down. We can now plug this in for EZ. And when we do that, this is us plugging it in. Now everything is in terms of our yellow basis. So now we can do this cross product. So I'm gonna distribute our theta dot. Let's distribute the theta dot, which is what we get here after we do the distribution. And now we can do the cross product. So UX crossed with UY, well that's UZ. So we end up with negative theta dot cosine phi UZ. UY crossed with UY is zero. UZ crossed with UY is negative UX. So we end up with negative phi dot UX. And that's it. Here's some of my DCM work. I'll let you kind of pause the video uh, if you wanted to work through these matrix multiplications on your own. And then I think I had one more here. There you go. There's all the DCM work. We didn't really use this one. I just did it because I don't know. <laughs> this is to go from between red and green. But this is the one we actually used in the problem. This is green and yellow. Okay, so you can do that on your own time. But that's it. So that's how we're going to be using the uh, addition theorem of angular velocities a lot of the time in these, uh, in this course and these examples we do. All right, I'll see you in the next one.